So this is what I've done here. I've, I've got my thong and the belly over my plating hook. And I've, to make this a little bit quicker, I've pared most of these down. But I'm just going to pair these last two down so you can see how I do it. I've got a thing on the finger called a cot, my sharp knife. And I'll just walk backwards making sure I don't tread on to anything. And once I've got that edge paired off like that and I've done the two bottom edges, I'm ready to make a little bit of a start. I'm, I'm pretty well limited here. Well, Wendy's going to move in a minute and uh, she's going to get round the other side so it'll be a little bit up and down the moving. I'm just putting on a mixture of mutton fat soap and water and don't you people ever want to start this platen up because see that poor old thumb how it's been worn down over the years because that one that's thousands of miles worth of leather put under that to wear it down like that. No I'm only joking telling you untruths. It really happened when the horse took the end of it but it's a good story. So I'm going to get Wendy to move up here And I'm just going to start plaiting this thong. I just cross the middle strands of it. And I'm bringing, I'm bringing the top strand on one side around the back of the others. Once I get it all set up, um, I'll be able to scorch along a little bit. Just pull the belly down a little bit. And by, by doing the way that I've done it, I create what's called a snake-throated whip. Um, it's more narrow in the start of it than it is in the body of it. And the whip, as the kinetic energy comes out of your arm, into the handle, into the thong of the whip, uh, and fires down, it hits this narrow part, then the swelled part in the middle uh, makes it increase its uh, pace again. Um, it's really important too that you hold nothing but the belly in your hands, otherwise you'll never ever get very fast at it. Um, if I had to do this for a bet, I would be able to cut, pair and plait one of these whips in around about 10 minutes. Now what I've done then, I've just pulled the belly out, and I'll show you the next time I do it. I've just pulled the belly out. People wonder how you get the tangle out, but I'll show you. Should be able to. When I was younger, I, I probably, and, and Wendy too, we'd both knock one of these over in about seven minutes, all up. But uh, what's the point? You don't have to go at a million mile an hour now. I'd uh, I'd make a dozen of these thongs in a day, and uh, a dozen of the stock crops the next day. And that works out at six a day, so, I mean, that's all right. I don't need to do any more than that. So I, this is tangling up at the bottom. Maybe when you can show our friends overseas that, see how that's all tangling up down there. Well, it's, it's splatting itself again. And uh, the way that you untangle that, some people over in America, people use what they call a tamale or tamale, um, and they wrap all the strands up. But I don't bother. I'll let it tangle up a good bit. So that's all tangled up there. So there's the belly. I'll just pull that out there. Pull one of my strands on the left or right side. It doesn't matter. Give it a shake and it's out. <clears throat> you don't want your plaiting hook. Some people have, uh, have the hook up too high. But you want the hook there, uh, probably about halfway between your belly button and your up here, boobs if you want to call it that. Um, and don't ever try and, and you're going to do this, don't ever try and do that and not put a belly in it. And I'm going to slow down so that you can see it. I'm not trying to show off, but this is the pace I work at. If you try and hold anything but that belly, you'll never attain speed. You must only just hold the belly of the whip and put your thumb 
and forefinger there where it crosses. Take this hand, in this case, under the top one, around the back and grasp the other top one and lay it there and change hands. This hand then is ready to go again. There, over, change hands. And see this hand is ready to go again. If you were to make the mistake of holding a strand in this fashion, watch what happens. So I'm going to hold that strand. I'm going to bring this strand round. I end up with two in that hand. Nothing above my finger. I've got to change. I'm tacky handed. I'm going to change. I've got to drop it. I've got to lift that, turn it round and pull it. I've got two in my hand. No good. Drop it. Put that one up. Pull it. You don't get speed that way and you can't achieve speed. I, this is the same method I use if I'm plaiting a 24 strand, a 20 strand, a 12 strand or 16 strand whip. I hold nothing but the belly. So when my, this way to do it, which is correct, you're already set up to make your next move. Uh, and, and it becomes so involuntary after a while. You don't you don't even think about what you're doing. It happens. I mean, I recite poetry or, or talk uh, on any subject alike. I can look away and not do it. I don't have to be sitting there looking at it because my hands have sort of done this for so long. Um, I can walk out around the, out the window. It doesn't matter. My hands have done it for so long. And anyway, as we go down, I, I'm sure I won't have enough time to do the whole lot of it, but you, you get the idea. And what I'll do with that, when I've finished, I'll put the fall on it. Um, if I wanted to, I could just move this up to there. I normally don't move this up to there and wrap a bit of leather around it. All this for me wastes time. I could have another foot platted on the blessed thing. Uh, if you have something like that, it just keeps you up on your work. You can see if you look at the whip, uh, if Wendy pans down on it, you can see it's starting to create a taper. See the belly still in it. You've got to have that belly in them because it's whips like a man. It's got no guts, it's no good. It won't run out if you don't uh, if you don't have a good sort of foundation. In it. I'm doing this too mainly because I don't want this to die with me. This the knowledge of this uh, trade. Um, it's very very important to me. The same as what those things that I post on Facebook about the horse. It's very important to me and. Uh, it's a legacy that was left to me by some wonderful old men who daily live in my memory. Um, I have here's my great old boss that was taken in about 1965. That's William Edgar Lawrence, Australian whip maker par excellence, and I was the only man during his 78 years that he ever showed and. Uh, Every time I'm in here, I think of him. I just put that back up. Every time I, I'm in here, I think of him. And he sits up there watching that I'm doing the right thing. He was only a little man. I'm six foot five. And he was only about that tall, this fella. And uh, I used to sit beside him on what was like a milking stool. And uh, I'd, I'd make uh, Turk's heads and sit beside him. And he had a hand... Uh, big as mine or bigger and uh, uh, what he would do if I did the made a wrong stitch he'd drive this big old hand down on the back of mine oh no he'd say under that and over that we're just getting down where we need to be that's all right Wendy that was just a fat bucket so to make to make this plaiting fat up I just use uh, soap and water and any sort of beef tallow or beef dripping um, you know be great if you could get mutton fat all the time but you can't unless you want to go and um, unless you want to go and uh, a bit melted down yourself but that's the point 
just go and get some beef dripping, about one part of beef, beef dripping, two or three parts of water, uh, two, two cupfuls of uh, uh, flaked soap. Out in Australia here we have a, a soap called Lux, Lux Flakes, and mix him all up. If he's too beefy, shot a bit of smeller in it, put a bit of women's perfume in it or eucalyptus oil or something. Make it smell like the bush. I just shot a bit of eucalyptus oil in mine. So there you are. You can see if you pan over that pen, you can see how that sort of tapering down. And uh, this is the first time I've ever done anything like this, so I certainly hope uh, it's of some benefit to you. Everybody, nobody sort of does it like this anymore. I don't suppose they've got to. They can take a week and a half to plat a whip, and who cares? But I, I don't like to do that. And you wonder where I've got me my stuff that I make my bridles and winkers out of. Here's this trusty old Singer 45k sewing machine. She's about uh, 80 year old, and that's what I sew all my. Winkers and different stuff on. She shouldn't do what she does, but by gee, she does it well. And that's about 80 year old. So I'm just about down to where I should be. Um, I'll leave a little bit on the bottom here. I'm not going to have time to put the fall on. Uh, what I want to say to you, any of you that are going to try this, everything must taper in this game. Everything. So if you put a fall on this thong, and you end up putting a... Uh, a little cracker on the end of it, so I'm just going to put a half inch on that look, and that's finished there. If you're going to put a cracker on that, you don't want any more than about that size cracker. That's about the right size. Don't think that you can build something that is a quarter of an inch thick and it'll go bang better, because it won't. You put the fall on that, and then put the cracker on that, and that's all you need to use. So, there you have it. You've, uh, you've seen how I played a whip. I promised you I'd do that. So I hope you enjoyed it. Um, that's about the speed I work, probably a little bit faster normally because I don't have people here. If you look over here, Pen, here's all my, uh, my handles are sort of cut out ready to go. So there's six of them there. Um, they'll be done today. All the rest of this is this morning's work. There's just some knee hobbles that I, uh, I, don't, I don't work quick, but I get knock it out. Some seat and knee hobbles I've got to send to Tasmania. Um, it's just what I do, and I, um, I truthfully love what I do, and I love being occupied. Uh, and I'm so pleased that some of you are interested enough to ask me to do the, these things. It means a lot, and I hope you enjoy it. Thanks for watching.